This is the LEGO Technic Planet Earth and Moon in Orbit, which is an orrery, a mechanical recreation of the solar system. It's one that I've been eyeing for a while, but I just couldn't justify it at the MSRP of $75, but it's now on sale on Amazon. And in today's video, I'm gonna be unboxing it, building it with a focus on conveying the building experience and showing you how it's built. I'm gonna briefly demonstrate its features and show you how the orrery actually works. And in a separate video, I'm gonna be explaining how all the gears work together, what the gear ratios are. We're gonna simulate some eclipses and some other cool things as well. This guy goes for $74.99 on lego.com, which is quite steep, but because this is an older set, it's much cheaper on Amazon at only $60.99. As always, links will be in the description if you wanna buy it. And if you buy it through my links, it supports the channel. On the front of the box, you can see the orrery itself with a nice little starry night as the background. This 10 plus set is set number 42179, and it comes with 526 pieces. On the back again, you can see the orrery, but this time the motion is kind of sketched out. The orbits have nice little lines and there's an arrow showing that the sun turns. There's also two photos, the left one showing a setup of a lunar eclipse and the right one showing the complex gearing setup used on the big arm of this orrery. The top also has a real life size print of the earth for when you're trying to gauge how big this set is in the Lego store. Let's open the box. As always, I don't like to use the punch tabs. It destroys the box. So I like to just shimmy it open with my knife. Let's see what what's inside. Oh, there comes half the sun, and we have a bunch of bags full of Lego and more loose pieces. We have four numbered bags full of Lego, one unnumbered bag full of Lego pieces, two loose sun pieces, two loose red rings, the instruction booklet, and a fairly small sticker sheet. Let's get started building this thing by opening bag number one. We start off by building this stack of beams, which is going to be the frame. We then use this wheel piece, which is dual molded, meaning that the rubber is one piece with the hard plastic, and four Four of these are gonna form the legs. This big orange piece is actually one singular piece and it's gonna be used to reinforce the structure. We build another stack of flip-flop beams with two more wheels. We can now assemble the X-shaped frame. It's still pretty loose being only connected by one pin, but we quickly reinforce it with these black ginormous quarter circle gear piece things. Not sure what to call them. The four of them perfectly go together making a ginormous black circle. The fourth wheel is now put in place and and the bottom of the frame is now done. This is where we start adding gears and trust me, there's a lot of them. This is definitely my type of build. I love mechanical Lego builds. This big frame assembly goes onto the base and it's actually quite difficult to align all the pins. The next step calls for you to tilt down these two dark gray pieces and connect everything with a three module long axle. Doing this on both sides secures the frame assembly in place. Time to open bag two. We see the emergence of some system pieces. I really don't know why these are here. There's gonna be no stickers on them. They just kind of cover up the gearing, which in my opinion is not that good. Adding this big black gear connects all the gears. Then we have a piece I've never seen before, a three by five L-shaped flip-flop beam. We build it into a relatively complex contraption. That's basically a big stack of some beams and connector pieces. Attaching this dark gray beam is extremely hard. There's multiple pins and everything coming from all sorts of directions. Just be patient. Eventually it'll go in. We add another seemingly random array of connectors and this massive black gear now goes on. It actually meshes with the small tan gear. A satisfying click connecting this turntable. We add it to our gear assembly and apparently this beam just decided to go flying. Let me go get it. Finally add the big turntable assembly to the base. And now you're supposed to push in this three long blue beam with the blue pin. It's quite hard to get everything aligned. You might have to get your finger in behind it. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to show that by hitting the like button. It helps more than you know it. And let's get this video out to as many people as possible so that they all can see my cats. Then we add the crank with the golden handle. And once we add this bevel gear, everything should be connected up. That central axis axle should be turning and the turntable should also be turning but slower. Look at all those gears and there's so much more to come. Another funky white system assembly and then we finish this gear burger off with the second big orange 
huge circle piece. This once again is quite hard to attach. There's four pins and two axles. Just make sure every single one is lined up. We then add some stickers. These are gonna indicate what month it is. These are not the easiest to align, but they're also not the worst. Time to open bag number three. Starting off by attaching a turntable to a frame. We then add this nice little gear down, I guess gearbox kind of thing. This meshes with the two black bevel gears so well. It's so satisfying and all the gears are now connected. We start building the sidearm to which the earth and the moon are going to be connected. We then build this gold roller piece. This uses the same light gray piece from the wing of the Ford GT, but this time it's actually useful because we want absolutely no friction on the gold piece. We attach this to the gearbox thing that we built and guess what? The gears satisfyingly mesh again. You first connect the the pins and then push this axle in. That's a very neat solution to attaching this arm. This whole assembly is attached to the base. This is connected to the spinning turntable by a frame with some more unnecessary system pieces. This golden tooth piece is the month indicator. Now we build the sun. By the way, these are yellow pins. I've never seen this color before, but thankfully they kind of match the colors here. They're not quite perfect. The pins are still a lot lighter yellow, but it's much better than using the black ones. We can now test it by turning the little handle and sure enough, everything turns. The arm turns, the sun turns, the axles and the arm turn, everything seems to be right. Now it's time for the last bag, bag number four. We start off the bottom of the earth assembly by stacking some turntables. We then add more gears, even more gears. Man, I love gears. If you love gears, this set is great, even if you just get it for the parts. We add the smaller gray circle piece, and guess what? More gears! This build has been really fun so far. Pretty much zero repetition and just gears. More of those flip-flop L-beam pieces. Nice to see some more in the set. We finish off this burger with another gray circular piece. Once again, this is very hard to attach. Two axles and four pins, but you can do it. These little wheels with microphone pieces are gonna be running along the inside of the circular piece. These are there in order to stabilize the middle section of the turntable. Without them, it would be quite wobbly. More gears and a universal joint. This is gonna be the axis that the earth spins on. We then build the earth, and unfortunately, we don't have the color matched pins this time. Make sure you align the prints though. It just slides onto this axle. The earth is now in place. The moon gets added. That golden tooth piece is going to be the indicator that shows the current moon phase. This whole earth assembly is then connected to the arm. Make sure both of those brown and tan axles get connected. We then add two more pieces just to finish everything off. And the build is done. You can now test it by turning the crankshaft. The sun turns. The arm goes around. The earth turns really quickly. And the moon orbits the earth. Not only that, but the tilt angle of the earth actually remains constant in space and I'll get into how that works in a little bit. Here are the spare parts that I was left with. Very few for an over 500 piece Lego set, but it's Technic. I decided to throw in a Power Functions M motor. Obviously that's not included in this set and it's going pretty fast, but the M motor can easily keep up. So you can see that it doesn't require an immense amount of torque to make this work. The building experience was amazing. There was barely any repetition, if any at all. And there were lots of gears and cool techniques used. If you're someone like me, who loves to build mechanical contraptions, this is definitely for you and I'd highly recommend you to pick it up through the links in the description. I decided to cut this video into two parts because it would get really long. So this was the build review and in the next video, I'm gonna be taking a deep dive at all the gear ratios and everything that this set has to offer and I'm even gonna be simulating some eclipses. So definitely hit the like and the subscribe button with the bell notifications to get notified as soon as it drops. And if you wanna see another similar video like this one from me check out this video next youtube thinks you'll really enjoy it